G'day and welcome back to the channel. I want to talk about the Avata drone, the Avata drone from DJI. Now, the FAA recently published a list of compliant drones with their remote ID, the new remote ID system that was supposed to come into effect on the 16th of September. And enforcement's been pushed out for another three months till the 16th of December because reasons. Anyway, the FAA has published a list of drones that are supposedly compliant with the new standard remote ID system. And on that list, there are the usual drones you'd expect. There's the DJI Mavic, the DJI Mini 3 Pro. These drones from DJI have compliance with this standard remote ID system, which means let's talk about that standard remote ID system. What does it mean? Well, first of all, the drone must broadcast some information. That information includes the height and latitude and longitude of the drone at speed, the operator, uh, ID, a session ID, and very importantly for standard remote ID, it must also broadcast in real time, that's at least once a second, the actual position of the operator with the ground station. So that's the, the person operating the drone. Their position must be reported. It's not good enough just to report the takeoff position, as would be the case with a broadcast module, but with standard remote ID, which is supposed to be fitted to all store-bought drones as of the 16th of September, with standard remote ID, the Position, actual position of the operator must be broadcast. So if the operator walks away from the home position, the information broadcast by the drone must reflect the fact that the operator is now in a different position. And that requires that the, the ground station, whether it be your goggles in the case of an FPV drone or your radio control transmitter in the case of a, a, you know, some other drone, that ground station must know where it is. And if you're flying a Mavic or a Mavic Mini, not a problem because normally you have a smartphone. The smartphone plugs into the controller and that gives you the screen so you can see what the drone's looking at and you can use that to control various aspects of the drone's operation. Start and stop recording, that sort of thing. So that's fine in the case of regular camera drone, but the Avata, slightly a different beast. Now the Avata is on the FAA's list of remote ID compliant drones. And at the moment, it shouldn't be. And you might think, well, how did it get on there? Well, this is another, Boeing 737 MAX situation. The FAA is relying on manufacturers to effectively self-certify. The, the FAA has said uh, manufacturers only need to provide us with a declaration of compliance. They need to say, we comply. And the FAA says, okay, we believe you. That didn't work out so well with the Boeing 737 MAX. Fortunately, when it comes to drones, the safety issues aren't there. But there's still an issue because DJI has said that the Avata is remote ID compliant. And at the moment, it's not. It's definitely not. Not if we look at the rule and what the requirements of the rule are. For example, you can go out with your Avata and your motion controller and your goggles and you can fly. And if you're doing that right now, it is not remote ID compliant because there's no way for that drone to know where you, the operator, are standing. There's no GPS in the motion controller. There's no GPS in the goggles. So if that's the way you're flying and you can fly like that, then it is not, despite what it says on the FAA website, it is not remote ID compliant. So yeah, a bit of a bit of a problem there. If the FAA is not going to check these things, then that list becomes worthless. You can't rely on that list. Now the Avata can be remote ID compliant or has the potential to be, but that will require a software update because if we look at the executive summary of the remote ID rule, there's several things that a drone must do in order to be compliant with the rule. And one of those things is that the, the drone must self-test, make sure it can't take off if remote ID is not functioning. Now at the moment, the because you can fly without the smartphone and therefore you're not broadcasting the operator position, it's not stopping you from flying. So it, it is not compliant with the rule at the moment. Another thing that must happen is the remote ID cannot be disabled by the operator. So at the moment, um, if you plug your smartphone into your Avata, it may be remote ID compliant in so much as it may broadcast your position, but you can unplug the phone and it'll keep flying and it will take off without the phone connected. So it's not compliant. You can disable the remote ID by simply unplugging your phone and that is not compliant with the rule. So hmm, there is a problem. It also means that DJI, if they want to truly be compliant, are going to have to make a software update to the Avata before the, the 16th of December when the FAA says we're going to be enforcing this rule. And because uh, if they don't, well, DJI will be in trouble. Now, the thing is, what will happen before the 16th of December is DJI will push out a software update to your drone that will stop it from taking off unless you have a smartphone plugged into your goggles. If you've got a Novata, you'll have to have a smartphone plugged into your goggles to take off. Otherwise, it will give you a remote ID error and it will not allow you to arm your drone. 
So think about that. If you're happy to have your phone plugged into your goggles whenever you're flying, that's fine, not a problem. But if you don't want the encumbrance of having to have your phone plugged in, that could be an issue. Also remember, if your phone battery goes flat, well, I'm sorry, um, you're not flying. And if you're in an area where your phone can't get a GPS lock, and therefore it cannot provide the information needed to advise the drone what the ground up or the, the operator's location is, you won't be flying because the standard remote ID system must check itself and make sure that it's broadcasting all the relevant information before it lets you arm your drone. And if you can't get a GPS fix on your phone, it won't let you arm your drone. That also brings up the problem of flying indoors because the Avatar has been seen, a lot of people have been flying it indoors. It's got prop guards, it's relatively small. And so real estate agents are using it to film inside buildings and things. But what if you're in a building, a concrete building um, or a steel building where you can't get a GPS lock on your phone? Now, it doesn't matter if you don't get a GPS lock on the drone at the moment because you can fly it in manual mode and it will still fly with that GPS. But once this software update comes through and a GPS fix is mandatory on your phone, if your phone doesn't get a GPS lock, you're not going to be able to fly the Avata indoors because it will not arm. Yeah, these are interesting points that, that DJI hasn't made particularly clear. And certainly if you go to the FAA's website and look at that list of compliant drones, you might think every time you fly your Avata right now, you're complying with the standard remote ID rule, but you're not because the drone, despite what DJI have declared, presently is not compliant. According to the executive summary of the remote ID rule, it is not compliant for all the reasons. First of all, it doesn't stop you flying if you don't have a phone plugged in, and it enables you to disable the remote ID by simply unplugging a phone <laughs> so it can't broadcast your coordinates. So I'm going to do some more coverage on this. I might do a bit of a rant, actually. This is just a public service announcement, but there will be a rant coming. So stay tuned. If you want to see more about this, subscribe because you would want to, you know, obviously not miss anything. And give me your comments. What do you think? What do you think of this remote ID thing? Do you have an Avata? Are you, are you happy to have your phone plugged in at all times and not be able to fly if your phone is not plugged in? As will be the case when the next software or the, the software rollout, the, the software for remote ID is rolled out before December 16th. You tell me, I'd like to know. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Thanks to my Patreon supporters. You make it possible for me to say, hang on, this isn't right. Well, just about everybody else in the USA, all the other YouTubers in the USA just don't seem to be concerned, don't seem to be noticing this sort of thing. You know, they, oh, it's on the FAA list. It must be compliant. No, it's not. It's self-declaration. And DJI telling porkies right now, I believe, on my honest opinion, they're misleading. Because if you go and fly your Avata today, it is not broadcasting the information it needs to be compliant with the remote ID unless you plug your smartphone in. And if you don't plug your smartphone in, it should stop you from flying, but it doesn't. So it's not compliant. There you go. Bye for now. Overregulation is like a tumor. It's killing a hobby. It must be terminated now.